Our third video lesson in Chapter 6 is on binomial and geometric random variables. We'll take a look at probabilities involving binomial random variables, meaning the standard deviation of them, and calculating probabilities involving geometric random variables. When the same chance process is repeated several times, we are often interested in whether a particular outcome does or doesn't happen on each repetition. In some cases, the number of repeated trials is fixed in advance, and we are interested in the number of times a particular event called a success occurs. If the trials in these cases are independent, and each success has an equal chance of occurring, we have a binomial setting. A binomial setting arises when we perform several independent trials of the same chance process and record the number of times a particular outcome occurs. The four conditions are binary, possible outcomes of each trial can be classified as success or failure, independent, trials must be independent, that is, knowing the result of one must not have an effect on the result of any other trial. Number, the number of trials n must be fixed in advance. Success, on each trial the probability of success must be the same. So we learn the bins system, binary, independent, number, and success. Instead of tossing a coin n times, each toss gives either heads or tails. Knowing the outcome of one toss does not change the probability of any an outcome on any other toss. If we define heads as a success, then p is the probability of a head, and is 0.5 on any toss. The number of heads in n tosses is a binomial random variable x. The probability distribution is called a binomial distribution. The count x of successes is the binomial random variable. The probability distribution is a binomial distribution with parameters n and p, where n is number of trials of the chance process, and p is the probability of the success of any one trial. The possible values of x are the whole numbers from 0 to n. Note, when checking the binomial condition, be sure to check the bins and make sure you're asked to count the number of successes in a certain number of trials. Determine whether n variables have a binomial distribution. Roll a die 10 times, fair die, and let x equal the number of sixes. Binomial, or sorry, binary, yes. Independent, yes. Number, yes, 10 trials. Success, yes. Probability of success is always 1 over 6. Shoot a basketball 20 times from various distances. What lie equal number of shots? Binary, yes. Is it independent? Yes. Are there a number of trials given? Yes, 20 trials. And success? No. The possible success changes because the shots are taken from various distances. Up to the next 100 cars that go by, and let's see if the colors are binary. No, there are more than two possible colors. So use not even a random variable since the outcomes aren't numerical. In a binomial setting, we can define a random variable as the number of successes in n independent trials. We're interested in finding the probability distribution of x. Each child of a particular pair of parents has probability 0.25 of having type O blood. Gen Genetics say children receive genes from each of their parents independently. If these parents have five children, the count x of children with type O blood is a binomial random variable with n equal five trials and probably p equals 0.25 of the success in each trial. In this setting, a child with type O blood is a success and with another type is a failure. What's the probability x equals two? We have 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and 0 0.75. Multiply them out, and we get 0 0.02637. However, there are a number of different arrangements in which two of the five children have type O blood. Here they are. Verify that in each arrangement, probability x equals 2 is 0 0.02637. Therefore, Probability x equals 2 is 10 times 0.25 to the second times 0.75 to the third, which equals 0 0.2637. In many games involving dice, rolling doubles is desirable. Rolling doubles mean the outcome of two dice are the same. 
such as 1 and 1 or 5 and 5. The probability of rolling doubles when rolling two dice is 6 out of 36 or 1 out of 6. If x equals the number of doubles in four rolls of two dice, then x is binomial with n equal 4 and q equals 1 6. What is the probability x equals 0? That is, what is the probability that all four rolls are not doubles? Since the probability of not giving doubles is 1 minus 1 6, they're 5 6. The probability x equals 0 is 5 6, 5 6, 5 6, 5 6, or 5 6 times 4, in other words, which is 0.42. No, f represents a failure, f represents a success. So what is the probability x equals 1? There are four different ways to roll doubles once in four tries. For example, the doubles could occur on the first try, the second try, the third try, or the fourth try. So each of these is 1 6 times 5 6 times 3. Thus, the probability of rolling doubles once in four times is 4 times 6 times 5 6 times 3, or 0.386. Note, in the previous example, any one arrangement of two successes and three failures had the same probability. This is true because no matter what arrangement, we multiply together 0.25 twice and 0.75 three times. We can generalize this for any setting in which we're interested in k successes and n trials. That is, probability x equals k is probability exactly k successes and n trials equals number of arrangements p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. So here's how we write it n choose k equals n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. Just to review, factorial, like 3 factorial, as it shows here, would be 3 times 2 times 1. 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. It is a key in math probability menu in your graphing calculator as well. The binomial coefficient counts a number of different ways in which k successes are arranged among n tries. The binomial probability is the count multiplied by the probability of any one specific arrangement of the k successes. If x is a binomial distribution with n trials and probability p success of each trial, the possible values are 0, 1, 2 through n, if k is any one of the values. So it's n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k. 6 choose 2 can also be written as subscripts. So this would be 6 choose 2. So this represents the number of arrangements of k successes, probability of k successes, and the probability of n minus k failures. Example. Each child of a particular pair of parents has probability 0.25 of having blood type O. Suppose the parents have five children. Find the probability exactly three have type O blood. We know x is a binomial distribution with n is 5 and p is 0.25. So probability x equals 3 is 5 choose 3, 0.25 to the third times 0.75 to the second, which would equal 10, 0.25 to the third, 0.75 to the second, and 0.08789. Should the parents be surprised if more than three have type O blood? We need to find probability x is greater than three, which is the probability of x equals four plus the probability of x equals five. So we take five choose four, 0.25 to the fourth, 0.75 to the first, plus five choose five, 0.25 to the fifth, and 0.75 to the zero. Do the math and calculate out our answer with 0.01563. Since there's only a 1.5% chance more than 3 out of the 5 would have type O blood, the parents should be surprised. Another example. When rolling two dice, the probability of rolling doubles is 1 out of 6. Suppose a game player rolls the dice 4 times, hoping to roll doubles. Find the probability the player gets doubles twice in 4 times. But x equal number of doubles. x is a binomial distribution with n equals 4 and p equals 1 6. Probability of x equals 2 would be 4 choose 2. 1 6 to the second and 5 6 to the second, which is 0.116. Should the player be surprised if he gets doubles more than twice in four attempts? So we want the probability of x is greater than 2, which is x equals 3 plus x equals 4. So we do 4 choose 3, 1 6 to the third, 5 6 to the first, plus 4 choose 4, 1 6 to the fourth, 5 6 to the zero. Do the math and get 0 0.016. There's only a 1.6% chance of getting more than two doubles in four rolls. 
The player should be surprised if this happens. When using the complement rule for discrete probability distribution such as the binomial distribution, students often have trouble identifying the correct complementary event. For example, you're asked to find probability x is greater than or equal to 2, and you instead calculate 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to 2 rather than 1 minus the probability x is less than or equal to 1. To help avoid the mistake, write off the possible values of x. Circle the ones you want to find the probability of, and cross out the remaining values that make up the complementary event. For example, if x can take five values from 0 to 5, then you want to find probability x is greater than or equal to 2, cross out 0 and 1. Crossing out 0 and 1 will help you see the correct calculation is 1 minus the probability of x is less than or equal to 1 and not the probability x is less than or equal to 2. Mean and standard deviation. We describe the probability distribution of a binomial random variable just like any other distribution by looking at shape, center, and spread. Consider the probability distribution x equals number of children with type O blood in a family of five children. Shape. The probability distribution of x is skewed to the right. It's more likely to have zero, one, or two children with type O blood than a larger value. Center. The median is one. Based on our formula for the mean, which is what we learned in the last sections, we get 1.25. Spread. The variance which we also learned how to calculate in the last section, is 0.9375. So the standard deviation is the square root of that of 0.968. Here's our example for rolling doubles. Here's the probability distribution of this diagram of the probability mean, 0.667. Variance, 0.556. So standard deviation, 0.746. Again, review of the mean, take each value times the probability. And review of variance, take value minus the mean squared times probability. Notice that the mean, 1.25, can be found another way. We can take 5 times 0.25. This method can be used to find the mean of any binomial variable with parameters n and p. So here's how we can find it. Mean for binomial distribution is np. Standard deviation is square root of np times 1 minus p. These formulas work only for binomial distributions. They can't be used for other distributions. Example. Mr. Bullets to 21 AP students did the activity on page 340. We assume the students cannot tell tap water from bottled water. Each has a one third chance of correctly identifying a different type of water by guessing. But x equal the number of students who correctly identify the cup containing the different type of water. Parameter n is 21, p is one third. We can use the formulas. So mu of x is 21 times a third is 7. We expect one third of the students about 7 to guess correctly. Standard deviation, 21 times a third times 2 thirds is 2.16. If the activity were repeated many times, it proves that 21 students were just guessing, the number of correct identifications differ from 7 by an average of 2.16. Here's another example. The makers of a diet cola claim its taste is indistinguishable from the full calorie version of the same cola. To investigate, a student named Emily prepared small samples of soda in identical cups. Since she had volunteers to each, she taste each cola and try to identify which was the diet cola and which was the regular. 23 subjects made the correct identification. If we assume they can tell each was guessing with a one point or so one out of two chance of being correct. So we go through the bits. Binary, yes. Independent, yes. 
files, 30. Success, yes. How about if guessing correctly is always 50%? Since x is often the number of successful guesses, it is a binomial and a variable. So let's do the math. Mean and standard deviation. Mean, and p, 30 times half, 15. Standard deviation, 30 times 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5 is 2.74. Probability x is greater than or equal to 23 would be 1 minus the probability x is less than 22. So, graph and calculator, 1 minus binomial CDF, 30.5, 22, and we get 1 minus 0 0.9974.0026, which would be a very small chance. And so this part, last part was answering the question, of 30 volunteers, 23 made correct identifications. This is a good convincing evidence that the volunteers can taste the difference, and the answer is, therefore we have convincing evidence the volunteers can taste the difference because there is only a 2.6% chance that they couldn't tell the difference by, uh, if the volunteers couldn't tell the difference in the chorus. We want to make inferences, so binomial distributions are important. Suppose 10% of CVEs have defective copy protection schemes that can harm computers. A musical distributor inspects an SRS of 10 CDs from a shipment of 10,000. What is the probability x equals 0? No, this is not quite a binomial setting. The actual probability of no defectives will be the following. 9,000 out of 10,000 and one less each time and so on to down to what we end up with is so we get 0.3485 when we multiply these together. Using the binomial distribution, 10 to 0, 0.10 to the 0, 0.9 to the 10th would give us 0.3487. In practice, the binomial distribution gives a good approximation as long as we'll sample more than 10% of the population. So, here's what we know. When taking a simple random sample from population size m, we can use a binomial distribution to model success in the sample as long as m is less than or equal to one tenth of population size of capital M, which is population. Here's another example. In NASCAR cars, cards and cereal boxes, it's an example from 5.1, we read about a cereal company that put one of five different cards in each box of cereal. Each card featured a different driver. Suppose the company printed 20,000 of each card. So there were 100,000 total boxes of cereal with a card inside. If the person bought six boxes at random, what's the probability of getting no Danica Patrick cards? Since we're sampling without replacement, the trials are not independent. So the distribution is not quite binomial, but it's close. If we assume x is binomial with n equals 6 and p equals 2, then the probability x equals 0 will be 620.2 to the 0 0.8 to the 6th which is 0.262144. The actual probability using the multiplication rule is 0.262134. The two probabilities are quite close. Here's another problem. Almost everyone has one, a drawer that holds miscellaneous batteries of all sizes. Suppose your drawer contains eight AAA batteries, but only six of them are good. You need to choose four for your graphing calculator. If you randomly select four, what is the probability all four shoes will work? Since we're sampling without replacement, the selections of batteries aren't independent. We can ignore this problem if the sample you are selecting is less than 10%. However, in this case, we're sampling 50% of the population. It is not reasonable to ignore the lack of independence and use the binomial distribution. That's why the binomial probability is so different from the actual probability if we figure this out. The actual probability was 0.2143, but when we tried to figure it out using this method, we got a very different answer, 0.3164. As n gets larger, something interesting happens to the shape of a binomial distribution. The figures below show histograms of binomial distributions for different values of n and p. What do you notice as n gets larger? 
Suppose excess binomial distribution with n trials and success probability p. When m is large, the distribution of x is approximately normal, with mean and standard deviation given. As a rule of thumb, we use the normal approximation when n is so large that np is greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. That is, the expected number of successes and failures are both at least 10. Example. Verify that x is approximately a binomial random variable. For this example, a survey asked a nationwide random sample of 2,500 adults. If they agreed or disagreed, I like buying new clothes. Shopping is often frustrating and time-consuming. 60% of all U.S. residents would say they agree if asked the same question. Estimate the probability that 1,520 or more of the sample agree. First, we do bins. We have n equals 2,500 trials. Um, successes agree, failures don't agree, so it's binary. Independent. It's reasonable to assume sampling without replacement condition is met, and the probability of selecting an adult who agrees is p equals 0.6. Next we check. np is 1500 and n1 1 minus p is 1000 are both at least 10. We may use the normal approximation. So then we figure out our mean and our sigma, so in other words our mean and standard deviation. Convert it into a z-score. And then find the probability you see is greater than or equal to, in this case, 0.82. Remember, it's 1 minus because greater than or equal to is 1 minus since it goes to the left and less than in a normal probability distribution. Here's another example. Suppose 10% of teens aged 14 to 18 have debit cards. So our question is asking in the survey a variety of personal finance questions. So we do the same process. We ask the questions. Binary? Yes. Independent? No. Since we are sampling without replacement. However, since the sample is much less than 10%, the response will be very close to independent. Yes, there is a number for trial size, n equals 506. And successes? Yes. The unconditional probability of selecting a team with a debit card is 10% or 0.10. So n times p is 50.6. N times 1 minus P is 455.4 are both at least 10. We should be safe using the normal approximation. We do the math to figure out the mean, 50.6, and the standard deviation, 6.75. We're finding the probability that X is less than or equal to 40. So on this one, we use the graphing calculator, normal CDF, again, large number here, up to 40 since it's less than. Mean 50.6, standard deviation 6.75, it's 0 0.058. Now, to get full credit, we must use the calculator command. You have to clearly identify the shape, center, and spread somewhere in your work. A geometric setting arises when we perform the independent trials of the same chance process and record the number of trials to particular outcome occurs. The four conditions for geometric setting are binary, independent, trials, and success. On each trial, the probability p of success must be the same. So now we're doing bits. In a geometric setting, if we define the random variable y to be the number of trials to get the first success, y is called the geometric random variable. The probability of getting a geometric distribution the number of trials y it takes to get a success in a geometric setting is a geometric random variable. The geometric distribution, probability of success on any trial, possible values are 1, 2, 3, and so on. Like binomial random variables, it is important to be able to distinguish situations in which the geometric distribution does and doesn't apply. First, we'll verify that y is a geometric random variable in this example. So we do the bits. Success and failure. The result of one student's guess has no effect on the others so independent. T, we're counting the number of guesses up to and including the first correct guess. And S, on each trial the probability of a correct guess is 1 out of 7. 
So the probability of y equals 1 is a 7th, y equals 2 is 6 7 times a 7th, or 0.11224. Probability of y is equal to 3 would be 6 7, 6 7 and 1 7. And do we notice a pattern? So geometric probability. So it's 1 minus p to the k minus 1 times p. Another example. In a board game Monopoly, one way to get out of jail is to roll doubles. However, is it that someone in jail would roll doubles on his first, second, or third attempt? How likely is that? If this was the only way to get out of jail, how many turns would it take on average? Let's check the conditions. Binary? Yes. Independent? Yes. Trials? We're counting the number of trials needed to get doubles once. Success? The probability of success is always 1 over 6. Final probability takes 3 rolls turns to roll doubles. So 5 out of 6 to the second times 1 out of 6 would equal 0.116. To find the probability it takes more than 3 turns to roll doubles and interpret this in the context. So we would find we would take 1 minus probability y is less than equal to 3, which would be the probability of 1 minus y equals 3 minus y equals 2 minus y equals 1. So we figure all these out, we get 0.5787. So 58% of the time will take more than three times. We have a heavily skewed shape as characteristic of any geometric distribution. That's because the most likely value is one. The center, the mean of this would be seven. Spread, standard deviation, 6.48. If y is a geometric random variable of probability of success on each trial, the mean or expected value is 1 over p. Here's a review of the different formulas on the different situations that we used in order to figure out binomial distributions, binomial random variables, and geometric settings.